explaining this movie to anyone good luck you're better off just going to buy a ticket and experiencing it for yourself or waiting for it on uh, 4k blu-ray a lot of strange things happen in this place i just hope he stays safe What's up, YouTube? Drive by Movies here, and you're watching Fresh Releases. My name is James. My name is Blaze. And today we hit the movie theaters and we went to go see Miyazaki's new film, The Boy and the Heron. You see this world? There's more work to be done. Hayao Miyazaki's A Boy and the Heron follows a teenage boy's psychological development through encounters with his friends and uncle. He enters a magical world with a talking gray heron after finding an abandoned tower in his new town. So this is Hayao Miyazaki's final film. Well, apparently, I mean, we won't know until <laughs> until he drops dead, I guess, uh, if, the, if this is his final film. But uh, as it stands right now, this is his final film. Uh, we got the chance to check this out in theaters. Um, it's not always, I guess, a possibility to check these films out in theaters, but this was a huge major release in, in uh, the United States. So most people could watch this in theaters, which was a pleasant surprise. Anyways, James, what do you think of this film? Yeah, so I'm not like huge on the Miyazaki scene. Like I've seen a few of his movies, like his most popular ones, uh, Spirit Away, My Neighbor Totoro. And uh, I really, Princess Mononoke has always been my favorite. I had seen The Wind Rises, we reviewed it back when we did podcasting. And I enjoyed that movie, but it felt like a weird one for him to end his career on just because it didn't have some of the more magical elements that a lot of the other previous movies I'd seen. And this felt like a nice return to form. And yeah, in my time of knowing Miyazaki, I remember seeing him in person at Comic-Con for Ponyo during a panel. And I believe he also said that was going to be his last film at the time. I could be wrong about that, but I know for sure for a while, The Wind Rises was his retirement film. And it's nice to see that he came back for this wonderful film because I absolutely love this movie. But describing it to someone who's just like casually a coworker is like, oh, I heard about that. Uh, what's it about? I'm like, uh, where do I begin? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, it was one of those things where I think in the theater, it took it took me a while to actually, I think, enjoy this film in the sense that the whole time I'm like, I think that there's some gravitas to saying like, OK, this is my final movie. So like maybe as an audience member, you're expecting something, you know, specific or different than what you receive. But at the end of the day, like after maybe a couple days later, even I was like, OK, I think that this was a great final film. Film. You know, obviously, that's a huge uh, th thing to put on a pedestal being your final movie, especially with someone as uh, of a storied career as Miyazaki. But yeah, I think that this film, it just took a little bit for me to really come around to it. I think throughout the movie, I, w I was never like bored or not entertained. I was just almost like uh, like uh, awestruck in a way. Uh, but overall, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this movie. It, it did interesting things with just the, like almost I felt like it, a lot of it was like a metaphor for maybe his career or maybe some of the thoughts and feelings that he's he has you know about his storied career and stuff like that and I, I really enjoyed that aspect uh, also I, I do think that there is like elements into it that maybe talk about like his son you know passing the torch to his son in a way because his son is also a, a director for uh, Studio Ghibli so he's done it you know a handful of movies but I do think that there were at least for me, it felt like there were notes of that in in this film as well. But yeah, explaining this movie to anyone, good luck. You're better off just going to buy a ticket and experiencing it for yourself or waiting for it on uh, 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, I mean, you could explain like any of his movies and most mainstream audiences would probably be like, what? But I am so taken aback, but love to hear how well received this movie has been being the number one film at the U.S. box office. Uh previous week ago when it first came out uh just because like you know you miyazaki's got a huge following worldwide but just the fact that you know it's shined to be in the u.s box office number one is just outstanding to hear and then after you know i just saw godzilla's minus one a couple weeks ago too and hearing that that made like 
I think it made over 10 million its first week in the US and it was only supposed to be here for one week and the fact that they're adding screen times weekly just to meet the demand. It's just awesome to see because I remember just we have made fun of it throughout the years having this YouTube channel and just you can't like make movies like to cater specifically like with the Star Wars films, the Marvel films like at the end of the day, just make a good movie like because a lot of those movies are like, oh, well, we got to add some elements. So that way it's a box office hit in China. At the end of the day, just make a good movie and it will do well worldwide. You know, it might not be the case for everyone, but that should be first and foremost, the most important thing. And that just goes to show how long ways like, you know, Miyazaki or a character like Godzilla, you know, no Godzilla movie has done this well, but because it's just getting such great word of mouth and Miyazaki is always making legendary films, at the end of the day, your film will perform well in another country despite it being in another language. And I just love to hear it. Look at Parasite. And, you know, I'm, it's just great to see that movies uh, from other countries are doing so well in the U.S. And I absolutely loved it. I think as long as as long as it's honest, you know, truthful, honest to yourself, you know, essentially both these films are and and they've played like gangbusters here in the States, which is surprising. I was going to go see Godzilla minus one, I think last week, but just the times didn't align because there was only like one showtime at the theater I wanted to go to. And then I checked this week and there's like 10 showtimes now this week. So I'm like, OK, I guess it's not leaving anymore. But usually like when the films are leaving that theater, they'll only be like one showtime that last week. So so it was surprising to, you know, open it this weekend and see like, oh, shoot, it's playing like 10 times on the day I want to go. So I have more than enough options. So I will be checking that out. Yeah. And uh, also just like, yeah, the, with good word of mouth, look at it like uh, TikTok's blowing it up. That movie, you know, Godzilla, like, uh, you know, I guess we're reviewing both movies at this point. Um, but, you know, with that movie, I'm seeing ads for it on TikTok and YouTube, even though it's, you know, been past its like one week uh, release that it was supposed to be. And just, uh, yeah, that great word of mouth. And I hope to see that this movie does well, too, because I assume this is, you know, probably one of the front runners for best animated film Miyazaki films are that's always the case with Miyazaki films and you know like there's been other great animated films I didn't see the Pixar movie Elemental but I know that movie did pretty well and then of course uh, there was Across the Spider-Verse earlier this year too but just fantastic to see and then you know this movie is you know I can see like kids maybe being bored and also creeped out too that's what I always appreciate about Miyazaki films like you know they are family friendly but there's that element of just creepiness to it and just I love that fantasy setting within this movie, too, but just also it being set in a, you know, very dark, real world that a lot of people can relate to. And just having these haunting worlds and realms that, you know, we see our main character go through and stuff. But with the beautiful artwork, just nothing beats hand drawn artwork and animation, just like it's one of a kind. And just you can take any frame within this movie, put it in a museum and it's just going to look absolutely stunning. Definitely. I, oh, I've been mean to ask, did you see this subbed or dubbed? Because I was curious about that. Yeah, so there were a lot of screen time uh, what's it, or there were a lot of screenings in both options. Um, what worked out for me, I was intending to see it with Jap in Japanese with the English subtitles. That's what I intended to see it in. And that is what I saw it in. Uh, it worked out for me. But I do like with most Miyazaki films that they usually get really good dubbing. I'm not sure what actor they went with for the English dub version. It's Robert um, Pattinson as the Heron, apparently. Oh, as the Heron. Huh. <laughs> Uh, that that surprises me <laughs> yeah, as the Heron, really. Yeah. yeah, he's doing his Batman voice too. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, when I I watched uh, some excerpts from the dub, I, I saw the sub as well, but I watched some excerpts from the dub, and the voices almost sounded very similar to the sub. They're just in English, so I was like, oh, that I it couldn't even tell that it was Robert Pattinson. It literally just sounded like the Japanese voice actor was just doing speaking English. Like yeah. it, it kind of sounds I mean, similar. Yeah, I'm not one that needs to see stuff with English subtitles, but I will always prefer it, um, especially, you know, when it's a film from another country, um, just because, you know, the acting just comes off way better. But with Miyazaki films, like, you know, I'm happy to show a dub version of like Spirit Away just because the voice casting that is great, as well as The Wind Rises. Um, I think those are the only two movies I've seen the dub versions. I think everything else I've seen the original Japanese versions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th I think that the dubs are always like pretty good. Like I remember watching, you know, as a kid, only the only the dub version. So for me, I would always gravitate for his films probably more towards dubs. I, I, I'm not really one to, you know, argue for the sub versus dub.
But yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's sub or dub just as long as you watch the movie, I feel like, you know, both are going to be good. And especially Miyazaki, they put so much money into the dub, like it's going to be good. You know, I'm sure, you know, in some aspects, maybe it could be better than than the sub or the subs better. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, as long as you see the film and you enjoy it, that's really what matters. Yeah. But yeah, now thinking about that, though, I can't imagine uh, Pattinson, you know, just because a heron, when we see the true form of the heron, it's, you know, kind of horrifying. The whole time I was like, what is up with this bird with human teeth? And then, you know, when you see the true form of the heron, I was like, oh, OK, but imagining Pattinson's voice on there kind of. I mean, it kind of weirds me out, but it sounds like a cool, like, you know, uh, cool character actor to place for that character. Um, but yeah, this movie is just like, you know, a crazy acid trip, like a lot of Miyazaki films, but yeah, I just love seeing like, just, you know, these weird parakeet armies and then, uh, just, uh, yeah, it was just beautiful and breathtaking and really hope that everyone gets around to seeing it just because it's really worth seeing in the theater, but you know, you can't get around to it, you know, I'm sure it'll make its way onto Amazon eventually. So be sure to catch it on there when you can and leave a comment letting us know what you thought about the movie. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And speaking of updates, be sure to catch all our social media links down below. We got Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and we also have our own personal letterbox accounts. So that'll conclude this week's episode, everyone. Tune in next week for a brand new video.